operators can learn to drive a tank, but thorough instruction is needed to make a good driver. The driver must know what his tank will do, how steep a grade it will climb, how wide a ditch it will cross. He must know how to inspect his tank for mechanical defects and how to keep it in running condition. Two types of tanks appear in this film. The light tank, M3, which has a crew of four men, and the medium tank, M3, which has a crew of seven. Some medium tanks have crews of five or six members. The light tank is armed with a 37 millimeter gun and five 30 caliber machine guns. The right and left Sponson guns, the anti-aircraft machine gun, the bow gun, and the coaxial gun. The medium tank is armed with four caliber 30 machine guns, two bow guns, a coaxial gun, and an anti-aircraft machine gun. The medium tank also carries a 37 millimeter gun and a 75 millimeter gun. Armor plate protects the tanks against rifle and machine gun fire. The weight of the light tank is 14 tons and the weight of the medium tank 28 tons. On roads, the light tank can travel 30 miles an hour for short stretches and 20 to 25 miles an hour for sustained periods. The slower medium tank will travel 20 to 25 miles an hour for short stretches and can sustain 15 to 20 miles an hour. In cross-country operations, the light tank will travel from 15 to 20 miles an hour, while the cross-country speed of the medium tank is from 10 to 15 miles an hour. Each has a cruising range of about 100 miles without refueling. The light tank will forge streams about three and one half feet deep larger tank can pass through water almost five feet deep without flooding the motor. The light tank will cross a ditch about six feet wide, while the medium tank will cross a seven or eight foot trench. If the ground is firm, the light tank will climb a 45 degree slope. The medium tank will climb a slope slightly less steep. The smaller tank will climb vertical obstacles one and a half feet high. The medium tank, two foot obstacles. Air-cooled airplane type engines power the tanks. Here is the 400 horsepower medium tank motor. A 250 horsepower diesel or gasoline engine drives the light tank. A tank driver should know how the power that drives his tank is transferred from the engine to the tracks. The engine is connected to the drive shaft by a clutch. This is disengaged or engaged by stepping on the clutch pedal or letting it up. The clutch is connected to the drive shaft which drives the transmission. The different gears are engaged to give various speeds. Normally the tank has five speeds forward and one in reverse. This animated diagram shows the different gear shift positions. Reverse and first, a powerful pulling gear, are normally locked off from the others. Pressing the button on top of the gear shift lever permits the lever to enter either of these positions for shifting. For normal starting and driving, however, only gears two, three, four, and five are used. The transmission contains and drives the control differential. 
This device has two brakes, which are operated by pulling back the steering levers. This permits steering by slowing down either the right or the left track. When one track is slowed down by the brake, the other track is automatically speeded up. Two shafts connect the control differential to the final drive gears. These, in turn, are connected to the drive sprockets. The drive sprockets engage with the tracks and propel the tank. The tank commander and crew perform certain duties each time the tank is to be operated. A gasoline engine, which has been idle for 30 minutes or more, must be turned over by hand to remove any oil or water that is collected in the cylinders. A diesel engine is always turned over by hand before starting. The driver, meanwhile, oils the clutch release bearing. He checks the fuel tanks to see that they are full. The tank commander carefully looks over the outside of the tank, paying special attention to the track. When the tank has the oil filler pipe in the engine compartment, the tank commander checks for the proper amount of crankcase oil with the bayonet gauge. On entering the tank, the driver checks the voltmeter to see that it reads zero. He then closes the battery switch, opens the shutoff valve for the right fuel tank, and checks the transmission oil gauge for the correct amount of oil. After taking his seat, the driver makes sure the gear shift is in neutral position. He checks to see that the steering levers, the clutch pedal, and the accelerator pedal operate properly. The clutch pedal should have about half an inch free travel. The accelerator pedal is pushed down slowly to prevent causing a fire by forcing excess fuel into the air horn. Again, he checks the voltmeter after closing the battery switch to see that it reads 12 or more volts. He primes the engine with extra gasoline. The driver pulls out the hand throttle a short distance and is ready to start the engine. While starting the engine, the driver pushes in the clutch, closes the starter switch, and turns the magneto switch to the extreme left position. After the engine starts, the clutch pedal is released. The driver regulates the engine speed by the hand throttle to about 1,000 RPM. He then checks the instruments. The ammeter should not show discharge. The voltmeter should read between 12 and 15 volts. And it is especially important that the oil pressure be 65 to 95 pounds. The driver tests the engine ignition by running on each magneto separately. He checks the circulation of the transmission oil by opening the oil petcock on the transmission. Normally the engine oil temperature must be at least 80 degrees before the tank can be operated at full throttle. When the engine is warmed up, the driver moves the tank slowly forward, and the tank commander inspects the tracks for loose, missing, or worn wedges and wedge nuts. The tank commander and driver make entries covering their inspection on the tank commander's report. The diesel is started in much the same way as the gasoline engine. The diesel engine must be turned over at least four revolutions before starting. Following that, the checking of the instruments and the rest of the tank is just the same as for the gasoline engine. The driver oils the clutch release bearings. 
He checks the fuel tank. He closes the battery switch, checks the oil in the transmission, and tests the gear shift and steering levers. But the actual starting of the diesel is different from starting a gasoline engine. A cartridge starter is used with the diesel. It is very important that the breech be completely closed after the starting cartridge has been inserted. The idle adjustment lever is pulled all the way out and the foot accelerator pushed all the way in. As with a gasoline engine, the gear shift has to be in neutral and the clutch must be disengaged. When all this has been done, the starter switch explodes the cartridge, thus starting the engine. When the engine starts, the driver sets the idle adjustment lever to properly warm up the engine at about 1,000 RPM. He checks the instruments and circulation of transmission oil. Both medium and light tanks are driven in much the same way. To demonstrate the successive steps of tank driving, a skilled driver will operate this light tank. The accelerator pedal opens and closes the throttle, controlling the speed and power of the engine. Direct use of the 